Hello everybody, good morning boys and girls. Today we've got a new story and we'd like to welcome all those who have been watching these stories and those who are watching for the first time. Today's story is about the parable of the prodigal son. The younger children might know it as the lost son. Here's the picture of our story today. Okay, boys and girls, now I want you all to get ready for our song today. And the song's name today is called Joy, 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 Down in My Heart. Where? Down in my heart. Are you ready, boys and girls? Let the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. To stay. To stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy. Granny Amy, lovely to see you. Lots and lots of love and kisses to you all. Today's story is something that Jesus told some people. The Pharisees were listening to Jesus, telling them all about how God only wants us to love one another. And if there's love, there can't be anything else that's bad. But the Pharisees said to him, Oh, but what about the sinners? What does God think about sinners? And this is the story that Jesus told them. There was a man who had two sons. The younger son did not like being on the farm with his dad and his big brother. He wanted to go away to the, from the farm, go to the big city and really have a good time. So he said to his dad, you know the money you were going to give me when I'm older? Well, I want it now because I'm wanting to get away from this boring place. The father wasn't really very happy about that, but he agreed and he said, here is your inheritance. But I do wish he would stay, thought the father to himself. Well, the boy took all the money and took his belongings and off he went. I'm out of here, he said. Well, his father stood on the veranda of the house, watched his son do going down the road, and he so hoped the son would look back and come back, but he didn't. Anyway, the son got to the big city where he had lots of money in his pockets, he made lots of friends, he spent lots of money, he got bad friends that he did bad things with. But you know, every day the father stood on the veranda of the house and he thought, oh, I do hope my son is all right. I do hope all is going well with him. 
Well, the son was having a fun time. He was doing all the bad things that one shouldn't do. What are bad things that we shouldn't do called? The things God doesn't like us to do. That's right. Those are called sins. Well, he did a lot of sinning. He spent all his money. He lost all his friends. He started to get very hungry because he had no money to buy food with. He did get a job, though, looking after pigs. But nobody gave him any food. And he looked at the pods and the skins and the peels that the pigs were eating, and he thought, I would love to eat one of those pods that the pigs are eating. Then it suddenly dawned on him. I left a lovely home. I left my dad and my brother and all the people who worked on the farm for us. I think I'm going to go back home. I'll tell my dad I'm sorry for what I've done, that I really am very, very sorry for doing that. And I'll, I'll ask him if I can be one of his servants, one of the slaves that works in the field. Well, that's exactly what he did. He got up out of the pigsty and walked all the way home. Meanwhile, every day the father had stood on the veranda looking down the road to see if his son was coming back. One day he bent back onto the veranda and he was praying to the Lord to protect his son. And then he saw could it be? Could it be? It is! It's my son! And do you know what the father did then? And this is something that dads would never do in those days. He just pulled up his long dress thing that he wore and he ran as fast as he could to get to his son and threw his arms around his son. And I think he was crying as well. And the boy said to his father, Father, I have sinned against you and God and I beg you to take me back and I'll be one of your workers on the fields. But the father said, no, no, come here everybody, bring a ring for my son's finger, bring him lovely clothes, oh poor thing, he hasn't got any shoes on his feet anymore, bring him lovely sandals as well and bring the fatted calf and we're going to have a bride we'll have a gorgeous time together and they did there was singing and there was dancing meanwhile older brother came up from the fields and he said to one of the servants what's going on inside there and they said to him your brother has come back and your father is so happy that he's giving a big party Oh, that made the oldest son very angry. And he just sat outside and sulked. And his father said, come inside, come and join us because your brother is here. And he said, I've been here with you all this time and you never cooked a, even a sausage for me and my friends. And the father said, you know, I love you, my son. I've never stopped loving you the way I've never stopped loving your younger brother. And everything I have is yours. You are just as loved as your younger brother is. Well, the big brother did come in and I'm sure they made friends again. Don't you think so? Now, what do you think Jesus said to those Pharisees who said to him, so what about, what does God think about sinners? And Jesus turned to the Pharisees after his story and he said, that is what God thinks about sinners. And you know what God thinks about sinners. If we've done something wrong and we know it was wrong because against God's wishes, we say we're sorry. And God is only too happy to get us back with him he forgives us god wants to forgive all our silly things we do we try our best not to do bad things don't we 
But God's love is so great that he will always forgive us if we say sorry. Hello, Sunday school children. How are all of you? I am cold because it's winter and I'm over it. And I am so tired of sitting in my house and not seeing all the people that I love. But it's okay. I have made a decision and I've told God that by summer, I would like Corona to be gone. And I would like us to all go to the beach and swim in the sea. So let's all pray for that. Because doesn't that sound nice? Yeah. Um, so there's that. So all of you, please start praying that we can go to the beach in December. Thank you. Um, okay, guys, but let's talk about what we actually had to talk about. So um, Granny Amy re- told us a story about these two boys. And the one went away and then he came back and his father wasn't angry with him. And his father gave him a hug and he forgave him. All right. So I think the reason Jesus was trying to tell us the story was because what he was saying was, even if you don't do the things that God likes us to do, it's okay if you say sorry, then God will forgive you. Okay. But I think we can take it a little bit further and we can say it's also quite important that when we say we Christians, we also remember to forgive. Okay. So what do do you think? What do you think it means to forgive? All right. So it means that when somebody says that they're sorry, you say, okay. And you can move on. You don't keep saying to them, yeah, remember when you did that ugly thing. Okay. So let's think of a situation. So they're two children and they're playing at school and a boy and the one child throws a ball at the other child and his lunch drops on the floor. And now he's upset because he's hungry and his lunch is now on the floor. So he feels a bit irritated. And the boy who kicked the ball says, I'm so sorry. All right. In three weeks' time, when they're playing at break again, if, if the boy whose food fell on the floor says, you know what? You should give me a turn with the ball because actually you kicked the, and knocked my lunch over three weeks ago. He hasn't really forgiven. And it's not very nice to keep holding on to that stuff and reminding people of what they did wrong, especially when they've said sorry. Okay. So I think it's really important that we, if somebody does say sorry to us, that we do forgive them and that we say, okay, well, everybody makes mistakes. All right. I think we've got to be very careful though also because sometimes I, you know, you do something and you say you're sorry and then the next day you do it again and you say you're sorry and the next day you do it again and you say you're sorry and actually if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you clearly aren't that sorry. All right. So... If there's a child in your class who maybe the person you sit next to in class draws on your paper and they go, I'm so sorry. And then the next day they draw on your paper again and they say, I'm so sorry. And then the next day they tear your paper and you say, and they say, I'm so sorry. You can forgive them and you can say, shame I'm going to try not to be angry but at the same time you mustn't not act on that because that child's actually not being very nice and you need to tell somebody that that person is not being very nice to you and that's very important so forgiving is great but it doesn't mean that you should let people be ugly to you and that's very different okay But let's go back to forgiveness. So when we do something wrong and we know that we've done something wrong, 
it is important that we say sorry, but it's also important that we try to do better. Okay? And just as when we say sorry because we're just human and we've made a mistake, if somebody says sorry to us, we need to try to forgive them and not say you can't be my friend anymore and not tell our other friends that you can't be nice to that person because they did this. You need to say, okay, we've made a mistake. Let's hug, let's give some love and let's move on. Make sense? You want to try that? Cool. I think I'm going to try it too next week. Sounds like a good idea. All right, guys, well, have a very, very lovely Sunday and try to keep warm. Bye. This week's memory verse is from Psalm 86, verse 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good. Morning, children. Today, in our activity, we are going to make loving hands to remind us that God always forgives and that we also should forgive when people do something wrong to us. So to do this, you will need a piece of paper, a mug or something, a circle to draw around, um, a pair of scissors, some glue, a pencil and a ruler. And then if you want to make color things, you would need some crayons. Start off by drawing a circle around the mug or whatever you have got to draw the circle around. <clears throat> and now you draw a face on, your piece, uh, on the circle. I'm sure you can draw something much better than what I have done. And now you need to cut out the face. On the piece of paper that's left, you are now going to draw around your left hand and your right hand. And then cut them out. And now you should have two hands and a face ready to put on our board. And now use your ruler to cut out a two rule pencil lines and cut out a strip of paper from the little bit of paper that was left after you cut out the hands and the face. And you can color this piece of paper if you want. You can see that mine is green. Stick your hands onto the back of the strip and the face onto the front and then on your strip write God always forgives. You can also put your hands together to make your little man hug to remind us that God will hug and love you always, especially when you ask forgiveness. But we also must remember that we must forgive people that do things that we don't like and maybe we must hug them to make them understand that we still love them. But of course, with coronavirus, it's a bit difficult to give a hug at the moment. So maybe you have to give a forgiveness bump. What a wonderful lesson that you have just heard about the prodigal son. I'm so happy for you and hope that you will be able to take this lesson to your parents, uncles, aunts, and other children and share with them about the love of God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the lesson that we have just had. Thank you for the wonderful teachers who teaches us about your love, about your forgiveness, about your open heart. May we also be like the prodigal son that we come running to you, knowing that you will welcome us with a loving heart, that you will welcome us with open hands. Thank you, Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit.